Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome to the Hobby Corner. Where's that light not on? There we go. How you all doing? Hope you're well. Hope you're well. <laughs> I just ruined my own flow before I even got started. How are you doing? Welcome to the Hobby Corner. It's Friday night. It's a hobby hangout with me, your host, Kev. Hope you are well. I hope you had a really nice week. If not, don't worry. We'll try and make it better with our own shenanigans, jokes, laughs. And tonight um, is a little something different. So on the odd occasion, I've uh, been very honoured to do little product reviews. I've done one for Garfi's um, Get a Grip and Have a Puck, um, which are great things So. If you ever need a paint handle or something to hold your open pots of paint, uh, go check out Garfi's eBay shop. But um, I've also got all the Colour Forge sprays, which I'm scrambling to get that video done because um, every time I go to edit it, I think, oh, I've forgotten something and I have to record another thing. So that's another thing. But tonight, it's not about all of that. Tonight... I've got something very exciting to review. Uh, so I've been very, very fortunate to have some stuff sent out from the army painter. So I was umming and ahhing about whether or not to do a video for it. But then I thought, you know what? There's been video reviews done to death on these three products. So why not just do a live with you lot? where you get an honest open reaction from me you can see exactly how I react you can listen to my initial thoughts on it um, and then of course further down the line say a few weeks or a couple of months I'll be able to give you an honest review of all the stuff once I've actually gotten time to use it all so if you've got any questions whatever you know, I'll I'll do a Q&A sesh um, once we've opened everything. And uh, yeah, then we can move on from there. Um, also, don't forget, we still have our Community Corner uh, segment tonight. So if you haven't already posted up your completed works of art or your works in progress or your swag, then hop over to the Discord. Um, I'm sure there's a link floating around from uh, Nightbot, um, there we go, I'll just pop it up anyway, uh, Discord, it's open and free to join, so go ahead, find the co community corner tab, and uh, have a way with it, and um, yeah, we'll do that at 10 o'clock, so that'll give us a solid hour to have a look at all the gubbins and stuff, so before we do all that, don't forget to like um, and leave a comment down below as well. Let me know you're in as well. If you're watching but a bit shy, don't be shy. We don't bite. We don't harm. Um, at least, you know, unless we're invited to by you yourself, then, you know, <laughs> whatever you're into, really. So, just going to turn that down in my ears. I have some background music going on. And, um, yeah, let me know what you've been up to this week. What have you got up to? What have you been doing? What have you got planned this weekend? And while you do that, I'm going to have my early bird roll call. So, starting right at the top, we've got Mr. Lupus Canis. How you doing? Good evening. We've also got Norm Skeelan. How you doing, dude? Coming in with the paint for the paint god. Love it. Uh, tip top ready minis can't make it tonight because he's got an early night so um thanks for popping by anyway dude uh we also got juna doherty how you doing how you doing um we have the painting rookie as well how you doing um we got robert evans how you doing coming with your super fly um yeah oh for captain bazooka how you doing wishing in with your little uh rocket Hope you're well. Um, so once again, let us know what you're up to, what you've been up to. 
uh, what you got planned for the weekend. And again, if you haven't already, hop over to the Discord, drop your stuff off on the community corner, and we'll have a look at that in about an hour. Oh, lovely. Also, remind me to drink my bin juice. It is literally exclamation mark bin juice. And it'll come up with a, a message to remind me. So, um, there we go. So, oh, Robert Blake, how you doing, mate? Hope you're well. Oh, he's got the flu. Says, uh, hi, everyone. Sorry, I've got the dreaded flu, but got this top cheer me up. So, thanks. Ooh. Who's the top? And who's the bottom? I don't know. <laughs> oh, right. Hope you're well. Hope you're well. Uh, I'm waiting for the new Vallejo game colour range, says Painting Wookie. Ooh, okay. There's a lot of paint ranges that have been um, going out in recent months. So, I, for for the longest time, uh, paint ranges for miniatures has been quite stagnant. Like, they... You had your basic colours, some colour like in betweeny colours. And then of course your washes or your dip inks or you know whatever. And then of course you had your oils, which was a different thing. But in the last few years, it's really exploded into a thing of its own. So um and it's just it's constantly evolving and there's new companies popping up which is great because you know we need more competition so then we can get the best out of all of the competition if you know what i mean um healthy competition gets good results you know what i mean thanks normski for the reminder so um hmm. do you want to see what i got let's have a look and see what i've got under my table i have A wet palette. This is my very first wet palette, believe it or not. Now, that excludes homemade ones because I've never gone out and bought an actual wet palette. Um, the only times I ever had one was made with like, uh, a, a, you know, a small Tupperware tub or uh, an ice cream tub, you know, with a little bit of um, wet kitchen. Uh, paper in there and then like grease proof paper on top and I sort of done it like that um, so it'll be interesting to see how I progress with this and uh, what I can achieve with it because of course for blending it's and keeping your paints alive for longer that's what it's really all about um, and I think that that can benefit you if you are working for long periods of time on a singular miniature or if you're batch painting as well so be interested to see what we get up to with that game color is a good game uh, good range as it's formulated to handle the knocking about of war game minis so it doesn't chip as easily as gw or model color oh there we go that's from normski um Next up, we also have the War Games Mega Brush set. Ooh. So um, this actually comes with uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine brushes and a free masterclass brush. I like the look of it. I like the look of the handles. Very ergonomic. Um, but I like the fact they've got the teeny tiny brushes. Maybe I could get a bit better with my free hands or edge highlighting with those. But it's a great variety there, for sure. So it's definitely, uh, you know, a good value for your money. In terms of, you know, the variety and how many you get. And then, of course, we've got the big box. Whoa. The mega paint set. 50 war paints. 39 acrylics, 4 washes, 5 metallics, and 2 effects. Uh, includes 3 war game uh, army painters. Blah, 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 my words. 
includes a free Wargamers Army Painting Guide. And it says uh, color primer spray not included, but it has 100% color match uh, ultramarine blue. I think that's a brush on primer in there. So, very cool. Okay. So, they have some color match paints for their sprays, which is very good because, of course, if you want to be able to. Um, touch up on areas you don't have to spray the whole model again you do want a paint that will match what you sprayed so you get that seamless um, erasing of those mistakes uh, so and it, the the caps are coded as well okay the caps and the labels are coded so you, you know what you're picking out before you actually pick it out okay I like that I like that that is a hefty box though um, I mean, shall we just sort of open up and have a look? What would you like me to open up first? Um, the brushes, the wet palette, or the paint set? I've never ever had a, such a large paint set either. That's madness. I mean, all the Citadel paints that I have, they're collected over years from uh, the magazines, from just buying what I needed at the time. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just built up. I don't have all the colors. I don't have all the paints because there are some paints that I'd never use or don't, uh, you know, need or can mix, you know. I like mixing up colors because um, it feels more personal then. But yeah, no, there's a good variety of color here. So anyway, let me know in the chat what you'd like to see um, let me know if you're still there okay uh, -bum -bum. let's just drop the music back on oh it, oh, it stopped all right let's see what uh, <laughs> epidemic game epidemic game epidemic sound has suggested for tonight I'm gonna add that to the playlist for sure. Ooh, a bit of suspense. To save the wet <laughs> in the box. <laughs> oh dear. Alright, alright, alright. We'll tease ourselves a bit, shall we? Okay. Alright. Let's tease ourselves. So with a bitty beep bitty bop bitty boop. There we go. Boom. There it is. Focus. There we go. Alright, let's open it up and see. Let's have a look, see and see. What I see. new army painter brush set sent out from the Netherlands no less straight to my doorstep there we go so there is a painting guide okay so I'm guessing this is how to use their range um, gaming in color Oh, war paints. Oh, they've got quite a substantial uh, selection there. 124 core war paints. Okay. Um, shake your war paints. It says shake the bottle hard, squeeze out a little bit of the separated medium. Shake for 30 seconds and squeeze out a bit of paint to check the consistency. Okay. I see they have... Um, Little bearing, ball bearings as well uh, suggested. Weren't they saying something about, um, oh no, it's not the army paint. No, there's another paint company that's actually putting ball bearings into their paints now, aren't they? Um, can't remember who, was it Pro Crawl, I think? 
Uh, so yeah, they've got a lot of selection in here. They've got the color theory wheel, which is cool. Uh, there's a lot of helpful information in here, in here actually. Um, I think this is something that's lacking from any Games Workshop set, for sure. Uh, so it even tells you about cleaning uh, resin miniatures as well using the right glues, how to spray it properly. I mean, there you go. Okay, about the airbrushes as well. Oh, okay, so they teach you how to use airbrush in a quick, quick manner. And then of course the dip shades, the quick shade dip tin things, and a strong tone, soft tone, dark tone. Fair enough. Uh, I saw the um, the Duncan Rhodes um, video on comparing those shades and stuff, um, and it looks it's interesting for sure. It's definitely a quick way of getting your miniatures done for sure. Train and stuff. Okay, interesting. Uh, Gina is a fan of the wet palette. Cool. Normski, not so much. Uh, Lupus made his own in a Pringles cap. Oh, me like this. <laughs> no, I didn't really. It wasn't really a wet palette. It was just a hydrophobic plastic cap, to be honest. Um, the lid is called Cling Film because I'm cheesecake. <laughs> Uh, strong tone is like old devil and mud. Ooh, okay. God bless devil and mud. May it rest forever in the annals of history. All right, so let's have a look at the brushes themselves, shall we? Ooh. Okay. So they give you. The information on how to get your paints going and they also give you information on how to keep your brushes in good condition so you know you don't paint more than halfway you don't want to smush when you're rinsing you don't want to store them like that because you'll bend the bristles though to be honest you don't want to store them like that either because unless you've really dried the brush out the liquid and any paint residue will get into the furrow and degrade the glue holding all together over time. They're saying keep it as a point. What's this? Uh, some brushes will shed a little hair. In the beginning, this is normal. Yeah, good to know. Uh, hobby products. So they got their whole range in there as well. Very cool, very cool. Okay. Right, enough of all that. Let me see the brushes, don't we? So, I've used a couple of different companies. Citadel mostly. I've used the Broken Toad ones, which are very nice brushes. A bit pricey, but very nice. Good quality. Um, I've used Rosemary & Co. like many, many years ago. I've used Poundland ones as well. Um, so, you know, there's some variety in what I've used, but this is the first time I've ever even held a army painter brush. Oh, that's a nice shape, isn't it? So that's a large dry brush. Look at the shape on that. Let's put these down. It's an interesting shape, so... Hmm. Lovely and soft as well. It's not going to last very long, no. Dry brushes get so much abuse. Um, and of course you got your... What's this? Vehicle and terrain brush. Okay. Nice and sturdy. It's not flim too flimsy, actually. Uh, I like how shiny it is as well. So that's alright. What else we got here? Um, 
Oh, Gina says she's not a fan of these brushes. Okay. Any particular reason? Uh, Normski. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. So this is Wargamer Monster, so I guess large paintbrush, right? Again, lovely and soft brushes. And then we have the small dry brush. Again, it's got that it's got that wedge shape to it, which is interesting. Okay, so I guess you get a bit more precise dry brushing then when you're doing miniatures because then you could target it more. Whereas if you got a flatter one, it's a lot harder because it splits around a lot. And now we're getting to the smaller ones. So look, this handle is so weird to me, but it, it feels right. You know, it's like one of those ergonomic pens. Uh, so this is Regiment. Okay. It's got a, it's got a spring to it. It's not bad. Um, seems alright. See how it rinses off. And it comes to quite a nice point, actually. Okay. Alright. What next? Mm, what one is next? So this would be the character one. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, again, lovely point on it. I want... Now, the real test will be, because, of course... These are brand new, yeah? Um, and so far, so good on the quality control here. But the real test will be once I actually get paint on them. And then we'll see how long they can last. Like I said, I am quite an abuser of brushes. Getting this lovely one. Detail brush. Ooh, which one's next? The Psycho. Insane de I guess it's insane detail, isn't it? Oh man, this is Titch. So this is insane detail. See this? I mean, I've got quite lo large fingernails because I've got large hands because I'm... I don't look it on camera, but I am quite a tall chap. Still, and then this was called the Psycho. Uh, <laughs> okay, and look, look at that! Look how dinky it is. I have thicker eyelashes. Look how dinky dink those. I guess that's for like if you want to do like extremely tiny freehand or like eyes, maybe. That's crazy. I don't know if I'll actually get around to using that. We'll see. We will see. Um, uh, not fair. Oh, where we are. Gina calls out the um, Green Stuff World Kalinsky brushes. Okay. All right. Those first few look synthetic. But that one looks like some kind of sable. Yeah, they do actually. Um, and this one is actually Kalinsky Master's Class. So this one is sable, I'd assume. Um, yeah, I got brush soap as well. Even with brush soap, I've like <laughs> you actually got to use it, you know. Um, this one's a nice brush. It's quite nice. Standard. Standard detail brush. All right. So there we go. First impressions. 
they look good. Um, I can't wait to see how they handle with a bit of ab abuse. And again, I'm normally painting on uh, like a palette pad like this or um, this little lid. I've just got this from Poundland. It's a nice little plastic uh, bit. So I can see what... I literally got it just for this. So I can see how the paints um, are when they're not on a wet palette. And then I can see what they look like on a wet palette at a later date. So don't, I don't want to ruin the wet palette just yet, you know? Hey Phil, how you doing, man? Welcome, welcome. Um, so yeah, these are nice brushes so far. Let's see how they uh, hold up with some abuse. So expect a video at some point with that. But I like the fact that it comes with a little guide and everything like that. It feels like a whole package then. Uh, rather than, you know, you having to get the brushes and then you need to get a um, like a magazine with paint guides in it and stuff like that. So yeah, first impressions, they look nice. Can't wait to get some paint on them. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bum. Oh, happy birthday to Phil as well. Hang on, that was yesterday, wasn't it? I already wished you a happy birthday. You ain't getting another one out of me, mate. I hope you're alright, though. Um, saved playlist. There we go. Dean paints things. How you doing, man? Oh, absolute babe. Thank you so much. I'm just about to have a look at my brand new toy. So, um, so what do you do on the Friday then? Do you go out partying? Do you, do you live a wild and carefree life? Maybe if I, I streamed on a Wednesday or a Thursday, I'll, I might get a few more people. I don't know. It wouldn't be a bad thing if I changed to a Thursday, I think. Alright, let's have a look in here. Okay, so we get another copy of the paint guide. So, there we go. Already had a look through there. And the Army Painter Tool and Assembly Safety Guide. Ooh. Okay, so it goes... I'm guessing you get this with uh, your box of tools and stuff like that as well. So it just, it's all that safety information, how to use the tools correctly, how to use green stuff correctly as well. Okay. Mixing balls, gonna need some of those, I think. Um, from what I have been told about having to mix these paints. But I actually got a an electric, massager heads out the gutter it's not like anything like that um but yeah it, it will do it does the job it mixes up contrast paints nicely revitalizes dead paints so it'll do you know uh friday night is date night Ooh, there we go oh look at that that's for the asmr crowd Ooh. <laughs> okay, so in here, so we get some uh, sheets and some spare sponges. So I guess you got to replace them after so long. Stop being moldy. Um, well, not moldy, but like they get stained after a while. I'd assume. Do you rinse these out? Can you rinse these out to stop them getting moldy? Or are they like anti-mold? I don't know. Um, so we already had a look at those, but you get a how to use wet palette guide. Um, 
So you soak, you soak the foam in water, you place it in the tray, add it more if you need, add the hydro sheet, wipe out air bubbles, start painting. It's easy enough. Um, still with lid closed to keep paint fresh up to 48 hours. Okay. For storage, you empty the water from it. You squeeze the excess out the foam and dispose of used hydro sheet. Um, it says do not wring or blow dry the hydro foam as it will damage the foam. And it says if the foam becomes very discolored, you can change it. But it can be reused over and over again. There you go. It's handy enough, isn't it? Um, it says don't tilt. Okay. All right. Well, look at that. Okay. Good in. Like it's full of information. I only used bottled water in mine, and a sponge lasted about six months. Nice. So if I go by that, I should have about a year's worth in there. But actually, I've seen the way you paint, though. You you paint a heck of a lot more than I do, so. Yeah. Yeah. Which is. You'd think, as a, a hobby YouTuber, I would be painting more, but no. Hey, Scuba Pairs, how you doing, man? Hope you're well. Glad you could join us. All right, mate, so, what's with this handy little slip? Whoop. And inside, there's different layers. Okay, so I guess this is to put your brushes in. And this is the deep well for the foam and stuff. There's no harm in putting one in there, is there? <laughs> Scooper says, ah, oh, the Army Painter review. Best haul of the bunch is the brushes and wet palette, their hobby essentials. They are indeed. The brushes, definitely, because you need brushes to paint. So I like the fact that they've got the army paint now embossed on it. I don't know if you see that. <laughs> there we go. Branding that would make GW blush. Right. <laughs> Oh, I hope that's not coming across too loud for you. Um, get one little sheet because there's supposed to be 50 in it. 50 sheets. Okay, so there we go. Oh. There we go. Ready to be soaked. Got to make it moist. After all. Oh, I think it's just, it's a static charge. Oh, the, the static charge is making it rise up. It's curling away. So forget that, but look, I'll turn it around and it goes the complete opposite way. That's mental. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So there we go. That looks cool, it's neat, it's, Quite nice looking. Not bad, not bad actually. So you go, there's my first proper made for purpose wet palette. Love it. Okay. I mean, uh, 25 years I've been doing it wrong, <laughs> apparently. All right, so we keep that safe. So I'll give that a good use and see how I get along with it. And uh, again, I will give an honest product review on that at some point in the near future. It's just I've got to give it a real good use first. So uh, there we go. Wet the sponge first, Kev. I know. I know, Gina. 
All right, Miss Miss Know It All. <laughs> All right, let me just move this out of the way. So, now it's time for this. Let's have a look at this. Hey, friend dog, how you doing, dude? Glad you could join us. All right. Look at all these, all, all these OGs just popping out the woodworks. I love it. All right. I love get, just cutting through that plastic. Need to wet the foam, then place the parchment on top. Top tip is use a debit card to smooth out the paper. Yeah, I get it. I use, I've, I've used um, in my time in retail, the old um, plastic, or the plastic or vinyl, I'm not quite sure. I think they're vinyl actually. You know the big final displays that are on glass, um, and like you got to wet the glass first, then put it on, and then you got to use something with like a good hard edge to press all the air bubbles out. So, and I've I've done similar things with uh, like frosted glass, like parchment style stuff at work as well. So I understand the premise is something along that but anyway i'm gonna lift the uh camera up a bit more hello that's my bed very messy not my fault <laughs> kids keep raiding it <laughs> right so let's have a look shall we Okay. Oh, what happened here? Oh, I forgot paint's missing. Let's have a look, see. Shall we, shall we have a count then? Two, four, six, eight, ten. That's 20, 30, 40, 50. Oh, okay, it's just padding then. All right. I forgive you. Okay, so sh shall we have a look then? Let's have a look. See, first of all, you get a free brush with this, so they're already on to it. That's a good, good start. It's just a regiment brush, bog standard but it'll get you through most of your painting. Um, what have we got here? So we've got silver, matte white. Ooh, okay. Leather brown. There's quite a lot of paints, to be honest. How do they feel against... Yeah, let's use a relatively new pot or something. There we go. It's a definite size difference. How much is this? 18 mil or six fluid ounces. And this is a 12, I think, isn't it? Four fluid ounces, 12 mil. Yeah. So get a lot more for your money. But does more mean better? That's the real question. Let's get these out, have a look, see. Um, is there any colors you'd like me to just like try out on the palette? Shout out some colors if you know any of them. Again, I'm completely new to this collection, uh, this range, sorry, of paints, so. Let's have a look, see, shall we? Oh, got some matte black, okay. Oh, I like the sound of that. Let's put the matte black and matte white over there, separate. Got loads of blues, which is nice. And lots of greens as well. So I can, I can imagine 
there's a lot of orc players who like this set for sure and the washes as well dark tone flesh wash nice and simple <laughs> no faffing around what's this greedy gold Ooh. got to try out the metallics for sure um, gun metal and plate metal okay all right but i'll leave those there for now i think i've got them plenty and you know what i'm going to use these as well do they color match to citadel paints kev um i think there are some that do and some that don't i think with a lot of ranges there's like an overlap so uh you can find charts uh color match charts for vallejo p90 um uh, not p90 p3 um army painter citadel vallejo pro accrual so you know just have a look on on the internet try the yellow that was always a ball lake for coverage which yellow the demonic yellow or moon dust we got two yellows here um demonic yellow is 100 percent color match to primer so i'd say that would be the one you're probably talking about right um maybe i should try out the primer colors then i think that actually makes more sense and i'll pop the rest in there It's nice to have colour matching paints to primers actually. Uh, just makes sense, doesn't it? Black, 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 black. Alright, that's quite a few. Did they send you the dips? No, they didn't send me any dips. Um, which is fine. I guess we get a good idea. From using these uh, quick shade washes, we'll see what how they handle. Um, you know what? I don't need these at the moment, so what's the how are we doing for time? Okay, we've got some time. The more saturated one. Okay, yeah, it's going to be the demonic yellow. All right, yellow. Um, I suppose gunmetal and gold are going to be ones to have a look at because they can be a bit on coverage, typically with the citadel. Um, all right. So I'll start with the yellow. In using the back massager. <laughs> it just doesn't sound great though on when I'm doing the live stream. All right, so they say mix it, squeeze a little bit. See how it comes out. All right. <clears throat> well, it's mixed, that's for sure. Where's that paper? Uh, wolf grey for lupus. <laughs> wolf grey, hey. I got uniform grey. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't have Wolf Grey out here at the moment. All right, let's bring this camera back down, shall we? Let's see how it goes. Whoa. Let's get bloody hell that proper washes out, doesn't it? Okay. Okay. So this is supposed to be color match for a primer so I would assume if you use it over the primer it would work alright but it seems to be coming out a bit thin in it I think you'd need to use a few layers actually let's get some of that off thin it back out Okay, so that's over black. I mean, you wouldn't really paint that over black, would you? So let's get some of that sprayed white. Uh, so this is the white scar, the new extra bright one from G Dubs. So let's um, have a look, see. And I'm not really, I'm not really wetting anything to be honest. I'm use just ever so slightly thinned. So let's go over the same shoulder. See how it goes on. As you see, the coverage is a lot better. For sure. So I've used the same amount. We've used the same brush, no wet palette tricks, and uh, let's get that out of the way. Oh my god, the contrast on it is just too bloody bright. Hang on. Let's rinse that quick. Ah, oh. <laughs> oh, ever the pro. Out of the way. Here we go. Right. There we are. Turn the light off. So you can see over a white primer, actually, it the coverage is quite good. But of course, it's because it's quite a light thing. It's got coverage like a Citadel layer. Yeah, I I don't think any of these are. The consistency of um, the Citadel base paint. I think they're all pretty much like layer paint coverage. The consistency. So, um, but yeah, over straight over. This is matte black from Colorforge, so it is like really absorbent. For um, why are you not focusing? Focus. There we go. It really does absorb the light. So it shows through a lot more. So, um, but you can see the difference there. Substantial, isn't it? Um, where is it? Yeah, there's no wolf grey, dude. There's an ash grey. Yeah, sorry, dude. Okay, I'm gonna just get rid of that lamp because it obviously messes it up a lot more um so what color shall i try next having having that back massager like mix the paints as a godsend right and i only thought about it uh, a little while ago i was like because i was think i was thinking about maybe getting a vortex mixer and my wife was like let me get you one for Christmas. Then she saw how much, like, you know, the 
good range one is and she was like that's a bit much and i was like agreed and then i thought you know what all it does is just it's just two lumps spinning around fast a back massage could do the same thing just use that and it just does the job um so let's see which other color did you lot want to see uh, da, 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 da. Gold, okay. Gold, gold. Oh. Do you hear that? They got bearings in them. Hey, well done. Nice one, army painter. You've actually put ball bearings in there. Well, that's probably helped speed up the mix as well. Alright, let's see how the gold comes out. Oh, well, wow, blow me off. <laughs> the vibrating got it a little bit excited. Oop. Okay. We're off to a great start so far. There we go. Just clean that up with a bit of tissue. Because um, I have read up on dropper bottles. I know a lot of people like to put their paints into dropper bottles from other bottles I don't see any point in that it's too much faff to be honest but um, you know one of the issues that can occur is the tube uh, clogging up which can happen if you don't look after it so that's what we're gonna do so let's get that over there like that now it is a metallic paint so I'm not gonna thin it I'm just gonna pull away at it like that and we'll go straight over this nice flat area here let's have a look it's quite a um, burnt colour you know it's not very yellow it's more orange I think or maybe brown would be the better way to describe it so there we go that's focus so that's over that I mean again you'd need a couple of coats of that Yeah, okay. But they got them in all. They don't have them in all. Maybe they're phasing them in. Ah, it's interesting because the yellow. Actually, I'm chatting shit. The yellow one doesn't have it. Okay. <laughs> I thought the yellow one had it. But it seems the... Uh, it is just the metallics. Good spot, Normski. <sighs> Look how dusty my uh, bloody room is. Alright, so let's go over that white. Let's see how it goes on there. I would love to um, see how the army painter um, aerosol primers compare with Citadel and Colorforge. It'd be nice to have that comparison. 
because for a lot of people, um, airbrush isn't an option. Um, so, you know, you can say, don't bother with aerosols, do airbrush, but aerosol is a uh, sort of a quicker, easier thing than airbrush, you know, airbrush has got a bit of a buy-in. Um, unless you get one of those cheapy happy ones which are springing up now. Here we go. There is the gold on the white. And as you can see, again, because it's quite bright, it's not too bad. But I'm looking at it right now. Mm, it does seem a little, a little thin, you know. But again, better to put on thin, layer up, than not. So there you go. See how close I can get it. There you go. So you can still see primer. But I mean, a lot of, again, a lot of paints, even with the, the Citadel base paints, you've got to put at least two thin layers on there. Three sometimes, it all depends. Uh, I'm gonna try the gunmetal for sure. Ooh. That one's for the deep massage. <laughs> Alright, let's have a look. Oh, we got a little butt. We got a little bead. A little bead. There you go. Oh, it's a bubble. Okay. Alright. There we go. Made in Denmark. Look at that. Okay, right. So, let's try this gunmetal out. I'll do the other shoulder pad. It's strange holding these brush, this brush as well, the shape of it. I'm not used to it. And it gets, it encourages you to hold up here. Whereas I'm quite used to going quite low, if I'm being careful, like that. Hmm. Now this goes over black quite nicely, actually. Um... Again, you still need a second layer, which is fine. But it's not as bad as one would think. Let's get it on the white. Now you're probably thinking, oh, but this is a sponsored product review. Surely Kevin is going to side on the manufacturer. And... Uh, I'm in the mind that if you if you deliberately bias your opinion to what you think people want to hear, um, it it can't always be the best thing. I like to be uh, openly honest, give positive, constructive criticism if it's needed or asked for. Um, and I have to say, so far these paints aren't too bad. I've heard a lot of horror stories and honestly, so far, not bad at all. Considering I've only ever really used Citadel paints for miniatures, this is actually not bad at all. Um, I like the fact that actually, this gunmetal... Um, it hasn't clumped as quickly as the iron it's not iron breaker is it you know what I mean the, the, the citadel metal and there goes the second coat easy peasy but I'll do a quick second coat on here because it, it's dried quite quickly 
and here you go. So, coverage is good. I've got no qualms with that whatsoever. I'd be happy using that um, large scale or if I had to, lead belcher, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Scoobifers. I'd be happy using these uh, for like touching up details and stuff like that, for sure. Small areas. Because, you know, if I'm going to do a large area of of that sort of metal, I would just spray the whole thing and then block out the areas in black that I'm going to paint anything else. Honestly, it's always the best for product reviews as no one learns from biased reviews. Very true, Mr. Normski. And as a... Uh, an infamous reviewer yourself. Um, these are sage words for sure. Now, let's get a comparison going, shall we? I wonder if I've got. I should have the paints to hand. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Lead Belcher. Uh, where's the gold? Gold, gold. Greedy Gold and Retribute are, I think, are not, I don't know, that could be, could be, could be, I might be wrong. Well, AP also did a gunmetal primer like the Lead Belcher Prime. Yeah, yeah, so all these ones that I'm using right now to test, they have the 100% uh, color match stamp on it right there which means that it is a color match for the primer of this color so they have a variety of primers which is nice um, again Games Workshop need to up their selection for sure because it seems a bit lackluster now demonic yellow looks a lot like flash get yellow I think Oh, look. No, it's lighter. Okay. Uh, no, it's not that one. Hmm, never mind. All right, let's just... For fairness and impartiality, giving it the, uh, the vibrator treatment. <laughs> There we go. A small drop. Oh, that's not small. That's huge. I think that's the most shaken that's ever been. Hang on. I'm not one to waste. Okay. I don't like wasting. I know these paints are going to last me only so long. Ah, uh, and I've ruined the brush. That's fine. You didn't see anything. <laughs> and that's why the brushes don't do so well. There you go. Let's see, like nothing happened. All right, so let's have a look. Again, I'm not gonna thin it out. I'm gonna do it just below. get a direct comparison here right and already I could tell you lead belcher because it is thicker it's a base paint yeah it's made to sort of go on in a more solid coat it's got a higher pigment count I would assume that's the science anyway um, I'm only one coat in and it already it's, you know, it's done what the AP one did in two coats. So, again, the consistency of the AP ones is much like a layer rather than a, like a primer paint, you know, like a base paint. But because it color matches um, the primers, you could just use the primers and use these to touch up. But as you can see, 
I mean, this is a almost direct. This is unless I was looking with a robotic eye, I couldn't tell the difference between the two. It's exactly the same. So there you go. So let's give uh, this a, a quick go. There we go. This time I'm not going to pour it out. I'm just going to... This was be sitting a bit longer. There we go. Yeah, it is a completely different gold. For sure. So what's greedy gold like then? Is um, auric gold maybe? Do I have auric gold to hand, or is it in put away? See, if I don't use the paint after a little while, I'll I'll put it away in a box. Um, yeah, I don't have I don't have auric gold to hand. Oh, well, I'll just have a look with this one anyway. So under the arm. Now the gold has always been a bit 50-50 with me with uh, the Citadel one. Um, sometimes it comes out okay, sometimes it's a bit, but I think that's with all ranges to be honest. Gold is just a tricky one. Okay. Which back massager am I using? Um, why are you looking to get one? <laughs> Just get your minds out the gutter because it's not what it's used for. But this is what it looks like. Yeah, it's a rod. But it's got a hard rubber bit so you can get in between the shoulder blades. Or down in the lower back is I also got another one that's got the three um, like prongs at the bottom as well which is good for like getting your thigh done but this one has got me out of so many like trap nerves and stuff so but it does great for the paints as well so yeah um so there we go look we'll start with the, the black okay So you can see, I mean, the different golds. You can see that even if it's not focusing. One is more yellow. The Games Workshop one is a bit more yellow. And the Greedy Gold is a bit more orange. Um, here you go again with the white. Got focus. There we go. So you see, there's the AP one there. You can still see a bit of the white through. But that one, not so much. Um, so yeah. Would you use these? Would you use these for your base coats? No. But definitely touching up areas you made mistakes on over the primers that you've used. I think that's where the secret of these lie. Or if you're doing details as well. So, but I mean, metallics is notoriously tough, for sure. Um, that description doesn't help. <laughs> Hang, on. Hang on, let's catch up with the thing. Um, it. That description doesn't help. Uh, get your wires out of the car. It's got three knobs. <laughs> Well, uh, it was like I said three, three prongs. I said prongs. I didn't say knobs, and I didn't say balls. I said... <laughs> Hard rod rubber tip. Three prongs. Oh my! <laughs> my back massager is the wife, but she doesn't work as well. So I got the artist Opus Vortex Victor. <laughs> Behave yourself, scuba pairs. 
Um, a wife always hates shaking the paints when I need them. <laughs> <laughs> I just got. I just got. <laughs> I just got an image of you going. Oh look, I got a really tough metallic one. Here you go, love. It's just standing there like. <sighs> oh, that's the right laugh. Thank you for that. Um, so there you go. That's my honest opinion. But I've only tried three colours. There's so many more to look at. But before we do, it is that time of the month, uh, time of the month, time of the evening, where we are going to have a look at community court. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put it off for 10 minutes because I really want to see these uh, washes. 10 minutes. Give me 10 minutes, okay? Right. Well, oh, these have agitators in them. It works. There we go. Oop. Do you want it closer to the mic? <laughs> it's it's like um I don't know. Have you um you seen those videos going around on Instagram and YouTube where it's like there's that girl in the car and she's got a nice coffee and she goes Um what sound is oh yeah, what noise sounds better than this and she rattles it and then you just you just see like just so many random people just go Good things about the AP washes. Interested to see what you think. Okay, well, let's go for it. Um, again, it's just on a plain palette, nothing fancy. Um, I come back from AFK and all I hear is Kev Love the <laughs> Love <X. laughs> All right, uh, dark tone. It looks like soy sauce, like real dark soy. We have strong tone. Okay. We have flesh tone. I totally didn't put it back. That's a really dubious noise if that's being used in the background for 10 minutes. For sure. And then we got soft tone. All right, there we go. All right, so let's just see how it looks when we thin it out. This dark tone is kind of like your known oil by the looks of it. See that. So, just so you can really see what it is, I'm going to put it on this bright as if white. Let's see how it pulls over this groove here, because I think that's the only real way to test it. See how it acts on those flatter surfaces. Okay. Alright. Mr. Fish, how you doing, man? Glad you could join us. How's the bubs? How's the waifu? 
Right, so this one is a uh, strong tone. Very much Agrax Earth Shade for sure. So I'll put that on the other leg. You see how that colour acts. So this brush is just a little bit too soft for me for this job. Um, right, let's just take some of the excess off, as I would with any other. Okay, so that's that. Dark tone and flesh tone are my go to for a lot of stuff. Ah, you're letting us in on your secrets, are you? So this is flesh tone. Okay, I see why. Right. Um, <clears throat> let's get the scarab on his booty. There we go. See, I bet no one ever notices that there's a scarab on the butt. Hey, okay. How many of you have actually paid attention? That looks nice, actually. <coughs> and then the last one is soft tone. It comes out quite woody. Um, hmm. Right, we'll do it on his face. There's some grooves on the face and some flat areas as well. There we go. Ha ha! See, I didn't waste these miniatures. Just spraying them with primers. I actually found a use for them. Ooh, there we go. Okay. So we'll give that a moment. See how that acts. But so far it's quite nice actually. Do they have more washes or is it just those four? Because we know at Gay's Workshop they have quite a lot of shades for sure. But here we go. Let's have a look. See. Right. So, the dark tone to start with. It's on that leg. Um. Oh, there we go. As you see, it's come out really smooth. Really smooth. Um. I even had a little bit of time to move it around, so there was no tear. It's still drying in that recess, but you've got a really nice deep colour in that recess. And then it's it's tinted the raised area quite nicely. So I like that. And then the next up, well, the other one was strong tone on the other leg. So, again, it's actually quite smooth. very pleasantly surprised you'll have to put some picks up when they have dried to see how they look yeah definitely will um so if you're on the discord or if you want to see me on instagram whatever have a good look on there i'll do my best to get a good picture i am shockingly bad at trying to get a well-lit picture that actually shows the colors and the tones as true to life as possible that's one of the things i've been struggling with with the review video um because it just doesn't seem to come out how it should like a, there's a, like a, a slightly scarlet red that i'd sprayed and every picture i've taken it comes out as just regular red rather than that deep scarlet because it's, it's it's got that it's not quite fully red if you know what i mean but it could just be because i'm taking it next to the other red which is just plain old red and i think the color balance might be thrown off but anyway i digress so yeah there you go that's looking all right and then we got the flesh tone on the butt on the butt scarab there we go you see that looks all right that doesn't it that over some white would make 
some interesting effects for sure. Um, and then the last one was soft tone over the face. It is soft. That'd make a nice bone effect, I think. Like a clean bone, not not like a, a dirty weathered bone. Definitely clean bone. Stay still camera. There we go. It's interesting. Does that help? It looked good on zombies, I think. <clears throat> so um Little is doing well, wifey is as well, although Monday she goes back to work, so just me and the kids after that. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. <coughs> Quite short maternity leaves over there, isn't it? Yep, hashtag clean bone. Um Bruce is sending the babs out to work already. That's a brave move, mate. I'll try to do it when they get to teenagers. <laughs> Try the strong tone over the metal paint. Okay. Right. Strong tone, yeah? Let's do it. Okay, so I'll do it over the army painter and the citadel. So, because I'm sure, I'm sure there are plenty of painters out there who use a variety of mix and matches of different paint ranges. So, uh, okay. It does an alright job at making a dirty metal. Hmm. I think you can see, actually this time you can see it better on camera how it come out. There we go. Hey. And uh, over the dark one. I'm gonna need more than that, aren't I? Being a bit stingy, I think. Okay, let's be a bit more heavy handed like I normally am. I'm usually very heavy with shades and washes. So, really block it in on those details. There we go. You know, I'll do it over the gold as well. Let's see if it can help make the gold pop a little bit more. There we go. All of a sudden, that gold isn't so orangey anymore. Seriously, I really want to do a montage with this song in the background, for sure. Alright. There we go. So, let's have a look, see. Very glossy at the moment, so we'll have a look at that after we do Community Corner, I think. <coughs> Because it is time. So let me just load it up. Do, 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 do. Well, well, well. Again, if you haven't already, you still got um, a couple, 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 couple minutes. Pop your stuff up on there. I think quite a few people have been unwell lately, so it might be a short one. Um, 
studio mode. Look at that up on there. Oh, it's ready to go. Oh, I love it. Keep it in the corner. Here we go. Here is our weekly segment where we get to have a look at what you have been up to this week. Whether it is completed works of art, works in progress, or swag, plans, projects, share it. We love to see it. It's starting us out right now. Is Waylanders Wondering? Who has his own little channel? So if you haven't already, go check him out. He does nice little weekly updates and he has uh these little um scale skills to scale uh series, so not bad. Um here he is painted up over on Kenobi. And he's done a little bit of uh, lots light source in there as well, which is not bad, not bad at all. I think he needs to go a bit thicker with that. I think he did a bit too thin, for sure. But if you go a bit thicker, that will really pop. But as a whole, it looks good. Nice work on the on the whites and the browns. I like the base. It's a very nice looking mini for sure. So thank you very much for sharing, dude. That's awesome. Next up, we have Mr. Fish, and uh, he's working on this monstrosity. Oh my goodness, look at the state of it. That's just disgusting, eh? Finally got some hobby in and experimented with contrast paint. Look at that. Madness. It was really pop, though. That, that blue is gorgeous, and that green looks really nice. Um, we... Oh, we've got some grots as well. An infamous purple. <coughs> Excuse me. Very nice indeed. How many grots do you have now? You've got to have like thousands. It's got to be thousands. Oh, and then what's his name? I can't remember the name of this one. Uh, but you know, doesn't matter. Looks nice. Love the old gobbo. Says Gina. Yeah, look at that green. See how it's like nice, like olivey yellow there. Like here. It's like that olive yellow and it goes into that nice deep forest green. That's nice. Molly for advantage. How you doing? Good to see ya. Good to see ya. Long time no see. Hope you are well. Let us know what you've been up to. Um, Raven's Rook. He has been working on his Christmas kit bash. Which I absolutely love by the way. Um, so he, he made a trip to Murfield as well. With his birthday money. But look at this. This is cool. Right. <laughs> He's just a little grot down there. He's like la la la. <laughs> you got this massive squiggy thing bring along I mean that's got to be is is that um part of that uh Space Wolf character what's his name Grimnir I think his name is um he has a sleigh doesn't he that's pulled by wolves is that that's got to be it isn't it that's a cool mix up, mate. Because it's thematic as well. Um, Scooper says, love those grots. I'm actually loving that purple contrast colour. Ooh. Uh, Mr. Fish says, 40-ish grots. I'd have more if I had a 3D printer. <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, just playing a bit of Total War. Mr. Advantage. Very nice. Logan Grimnar's Magic Slay. That's all right. That's it. There we go. A bit more of the details there. Very nice. Oh, I think it's jokes that he goes around on a hover sleigh. You know, 
And there's Murfield as well at the hub. The action pose. Yeah, no, he's just cracking the whip. Because, you know. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? And there's his hobby hall as well. Uh, so he's got some paint, some bits bobs. Corn Bloodbound as well. Interesting choice. I'll have to see what you get up to with that. For sure. Um, and that's it. That's it. Community Corner finished already. I think that's the shortest Community Corner we've ever had. But yeah, as I said, a lot of people have been unwell this week. So there's a lot less entries this week. But for those who did get something done, well done to you. And uh, thank you very much for showing us uh, your work. It's awesome. Um, so let's hop back to this. Where we were going to explore a bit more of these colours. So, um, for those who joined us, we had a look at the Mega War Paint set. Or sorry, the War Gamers. War Gamers. The War Game Mega Paintbrush set. Um, which I think has got a lovely variety. And I can't wait to see how they handle. Um, and then we had a look at the Army Painter Wet Palette. Which, you know, it's my first proper made for use wet palette, not a homemade one. And I haven't used a homemade one for many, many moons. Um, so I'm interested in seeing how that works. And then now, right now, I'm just having a look at some of these colours. I've chosen the ones that have a colour match to a primer aerosol. Just because I feel like that's a bit more of a relatable step. Because it is a... A box of 50 paints. I, I'm not going to be able to. Uh, go through all of them. So if you have a colour. Like oh. Goblin green. If there is a colour you want to see me. Have a look at. I have got a mini that is. Sprayed in matte black. From Colour Forge. The like most matte black spray. You can get. That's affordable. And I've got the brightest white spray available at the moment white scar from Giz workshop so we're getting a real good contrast um of how you know of those colors i guess and how they act upon different um primers different bases like of color so uh let's mix it up I'm also using a back massager to mix these paints because forget paying 120 quid for Vortex Mixer. <laughs> I'd rather use that to get an airbrush or put it towards a new PC, which I desperately need. Desperately. So let's have a look. All right, ooh, Goblin Green. Is it going to look like the classic Goblin Green? Oh, maybe. Maybe. Let's have a look. And again, I'm using the bog standard brush that comes with the Mega Paint set. So, um, I can see how this works. Because we all know the freebie paint brush that you get from Games Workshop is absolute trash. The quality on it is varied massively um so it's it's nice actually getting a, a brush that's not too bad as a freebie okay let's have a look let's do this leg here oh yeah you definitely don't want to paint it straight on to matte black unless you want to really build up those colors so you definitely want to prime it green first oh 
Okay. And then on the white, let's have a look. Okay, so it's not so bad. All right. All right, it's still very patchy and scratchy, so I would definitely give it a couple of layers. Um, but, it, you know. It's a lot less noticeable than it is on the black primer, for sure. So, pop them like that. Colour, see, the camera is getting so confused because you've got such a, a contrast between the white and the black. It's like, ah, do I, do I, how do I white balance? And then that in the background doesn't help either does it so there we go there is your difference there after one coat well so what I'm going to do just to be fair this coat is dry quite quickly so I'm going to go over it again and see how it builds That's a lot better already. Yeah, there we go. Right. I'm going to have to snip up this show and make it into small clips, aren't I? Okay. So after the second coat, it's done a lot better on the white primer over the black. Uh... No worries, Mr. Scuba. You have a good night, man. And thank you so much for um, stopping by. Oh, thank you, dude. You have a good one, man. Okay, so. Interesting. Two coats. They're not too bad. So that is go definitely still going to need a third coat, I think. So... <clears throat> Again, just like with the, the uh, Citadel paints, some colours are nice and strong. They come out quite consistent with the first coat. But a second coat neatens it up. But there are sometimes some colours that feel a bit thin on the pigments. And you need to do a few good coats before you get that colour. So... <clears throat> It is what I, I expected it to be. The paints are good as layer paints. Build up a bit of colour onto detail, bits and pieces, but you want to build up on a primer um, that most suits those colours. So if you're going for light colours, have a light primer. And if you're going for dark colours, the darker primer will work. Um, I've got lots of experimenting to do though for sure so and so many paints to try ah it's not enough time <coughs> so what we do for time we have well, okay so if there is a color you know of that you want to see me try on these two miniatures say it in the chat now um and yeah let me know in the meantime, I uh, I put out a 
PA for any Q&A. And I actually got one back. So. Um, Mark from Tabletop Ready Minis. He asked, um, is there a best brand of paint? Uh, he said, although I thought with it being Army Painter Review Stream, not the best question. So how about why? Oh, well, no, actually it is a good question. Because, again, this is an honest, open review. And I can honestly say there is no best uh, range of paints so far from what I know. And this is not just from what I've used either. This is from talking to a lot of people who use a lot of different ranges p3 um phileo citadel army painter uh reaper uh even the new uh two thin coats from uh duncan you know they all have their good and bad qualities because of course they all got a the range has to have its own formula. Um, so, yeah. It's all about finding what works well for you and your projects and then sort of sticking to those, I guess. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, no, I've really want to see how I can get on with these as well oh, actually you know what the white and the black I should try painting the white on the black and the black on the white that would be a good one actually uh, he also has another question he says um, why is dry brushing overrated as a technique unless it's slap chop um, so yeah Why is dry brushing overrated as a technique unless it's slap chop? Alright, well, I don't think oh, uh, dry brushing is overrated at all. It is the best way to highlight, or at least, you know, like you, if you do a heavy dry brush, you can get um, a lot of colour down on a miniature, like... Back in the day when Urukai came out for Lord of the Rings during the Two Towers, you got tin bits and you dry brushed the heck out of the Urukai armor. But it was a heavy dry brush. So you weren't painting tin bits, tin bits on. It was quite a bitsy, pigmented, metallic paint anyway. But you got large coverage on it and then you picked up the skin and then okay if you wanted to do a highlight on the armor then you got a bit of the silver job brushed over that so you could do the same with a lot of things terrain uh, foliage of some kind brickwork but also miniatures vehicles get large areas done quickly and it gives you that nice texture to it as well roughs it up um, or if you want to do big squat squads and stuff you know just heavy dry brush in there as long as you've got your main uh, primed colour on there you dry brush your medium colour on boom so much quicker it's not going to look amazing but it's going to look better than not painted at all and if you want to dry brush highlights it is the quickest way to get highlights done you just have to be really light with it um so there you go that's my take on dry brushing i think it is a very useful uh skill now in relation to slap chop <clears throat> slap chop's different now that that is basically a rebranding of the centerful highlighted miniature that's ready for um you know contrast or speed paints or uh any kind of gloss paints <clears throat> so um, it is just 
primed black or dark grey. Build up two lots of greys with a good scale on them and then a final highlight dry brush of white. And that's supposed to imitate the hues, I think it is, the hues of light on that thing. And you can do it directionally as well so that when you put those glosses or those speed paints on, it will boost the properties of those paints so you get a bit more gradient in there. Now the thing is though, <clears throat> contrast has been reformulated. Speed paints is currently um, being reformulated. Vallejo has its own speed paints coming out, I think. So, whether or not that's actually needed, we'll have to find out because there's a lot of colours out there where you don't need to do the centerful dry brushing highlight in order to get that effect. They flow fine, define the natural highlights and they do the natural shades. Um, so it all depends on what you're using, to be honest. Um, so yeah, Slap Chop is fine. Um, it's a good way of getting paints on a miniature quickly with very little fuss. It does a lot of what speed paints do. If you don't have those paints or they don't have the colors you want you can use a gloss of not a gloss but you know what I mean you could thin down a bit of paint from a color that you actually want put it on job done um, so yeah there you go if you've got any questions in in the chat as well um, throw them at me while you can I was, I'm starting to get to that point where the throat is getting a bit you know, like, you get that little bit of dryness going in there. Because I, I don't talk much. I say it all the time. I really don't talk that much. So when I do talk, I start choking up a bit. Um, so, yeah. Slap chop's fine. Dry brushing's fine. Any technique that helps get you miniatures painted is fine. So, there you have it. I really need some water. I've got a little drop left in it. There we go. That's not enough. <laughs> Alright, so there you have it. Um, again, I want to see what I can do with these. Have a little play around. I'll be posting pictures up as and when I get to do that. So I'll let you know what colours I'm using, how I use them. Um, in case, you know, even for those of you who do have these paints, because I know a few of you do, um, and you've just not found a way to make them work for you, or you haven't thought about the combinations and such, I'll see what I can do with these. Be creative with it. And uh, yeah. Uh, Kev, can you sing us Slades? I wish it would be Christmas every day. No. No, I will not. Um, yeah, don't worry, Lupus. I won't. <laughs> oh, look at this. This is a pathetic beard. I can't even... Hey, look at that. Oh, there you go. It's officially a proper beard. You didn't see that. <laughs> All right. Well, if there's no, if there's nothing more, if there's no questions, oh, I'm just gonna have to leave it there. So there you go. That's my honest review. I hope that helped. Um, and yeah, I don't know what more to say really. Uh, I'm gonna leave it there, I think. Um, so before I do though, hang on, close that. Uh, boom. So yeah, before I do, I must have a big shout out to those who have been awesome and been supporting the channel. 
as always, just liking the video, subscribing to the channel, leaving a comment after the show. Um, it all helps. Um, it helps with the visibility. Uh, but if you want to be amazing like these lot, you can put your money where your mouth is and support us in another way. Uh, with the YouTube membership, like Lupus Canis, Tabletop Ready Minis, Juno Doherty, and Scuba Pairs. Or you could go over to buy me a coffee as well, uh, like David Young, Zero Honor, Gunstar Hero, Ed's Art and Minis. He's rebranded. Uh, Juno Doherty again. Hey, Waylanders Wondering. Uh, you're all amazing for that support. Thank you so much. It comes with uh, little bonuses as well, like updates, pictures, previews, um, and the like. And of course, this one is scalable, so you can unlock more features as well. If you want to be even more awesome, you can join us on Discord. It's free to do so. Um, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, let's see. Boom. So there's our Discord link or oh, everything will be in the description below but i'll put it in the comments as well uh coffee there we go and all my other social media links will be on here facebook twitter instagram you name it we're there so um actually you can't name it because it's just that um Annoyingly, though, it does that thing where because it's got my name in the link, it highlights it and it breaks the damn thing. So, copy and paste and just take the little um, tick, or, like the little space away. But anyway, uh, also, uh, you can go over to Element Games if you like what you see with these products, you want to get them yourself. I get a little kickback with every order made through. Uh, our affiliate link at no extra cost to you and of course element games do good deals uh, with with reductions and stuff like that and if you use the promo code you can also get yourself double loyalty points which is more money in your pocket so treat yourself to a little something for christmas or if you got someone to buy a gift for and you're not quite sure what exactly to get get them some paint brushes or a wet palette <laughs> uh, or a mega paint brush set a mega paint brush set a mega paint set there we go my words are gone you can tell I'm tired um, so yeah once again thank you a massive thank you to army painter as well for sending them out um, it's awesome and uh, yeah I hope you all have a good night so uh, big love stay safe and I'll see you in the next one peace
I spy with my little eyes, something beginning with, oh yeah.